Hi, I'm Wendy and we're here in my woods on the outskirts of Tunbridge Wells in Kent. And we're here today to have a chat about the importance of deadwood and creating habitat in your woodland. But most specifically, we're going to learn how to make a hoverfly lagoon. As much as possible in your woodland, if you can leave your dead trees standing where they are and you can gather up the branches as they fall, fine, but leave them in a pile so they can also become a lovely hotel for the insects that rely on them for their lives. Um, now we do see a lot of bug hotels are becoming quite fashionable in country pubs and hotels around the country, which are great and it's, it's important, but it doesn't create the same depth of habitat that an old rotten tree such as this does. So hoverflies, um, we have over 600 species of flies in this country and of those 280 are hoverflies. Hoverflies are literally flies that hover um, and many of them mimic bees and wasps and even hornets in their appearance but unlike bees, wasps and hornets they don't sting and they're incredibly important pollinators and part of our ecosystem. Now Many of our rarest hoverfly species are saprocyllic and they rely on dead, decaying, rotting wood such as this for their reproductive cycle. And now amongst those species of hoverflies there's an even smaller subset which are semi-aquatic and they depend on dead, decaying wood and water, so ponds or collection of water within the dead and decaying wood creates the habitat that those saprocyllic aquatic hoverflies require for the larval stages of their reproductive cycle. And so today I'm going to be showing you how to make a hoverfly lagoon. So if part of your woodland management plan involves felling some trees for reasons such as coppicing or clearing the sides of your rides or because you need to make some more space then you will be left with some convenient tree stumps like these. They can be adapted um, to become hoverfly lagoons simply by boring some holes in the cut end of them. The quickest and simplest way to do it is with as big a drill bit as possible and this is an auger drill bit. I think it's a 2.5 millimeter, um, 25 millimeter, sorry, diameter. And you simply drill as many holes as you can close to each other. Then what you need to do obviously to create your lagoon is you need to add some water. This is rainwater that I've been collecting. So um, it's already got a few little bugs wriggling around in it. Um, hopefully they'll make friends with the hoverflies. Let's wash some of it out. So now gradually over time, the sawdust from the um, creation of the lagoon will start to rot back down. We're hoping that obviously some hoverflies will decide this is the perfect place for them to lay their eggs and for their family to grow and they will come and we will see um, probably in a few weeks time, hopefully, some of the lava starting to appear um, in our lagoon. But in order to keep that habitat perfect for them, we want to prevent the water from evaporating or the animals, the local wildlife coming from using it as a, a lovely drinking pond. So in order to protect it from the bright sunlight, from the evaporation from the animals, I'm putting quite a heavy slice of wood over the top, um, but leaving enough space for hopefully some rainwater to keep topping it up each time it rains um, and for some oxygen to circulate. So obviously you might not have some tree stumps from felled trees in your particular woodland but you can still have a hoverfly lagoon, you just have to make it a slightly different way. Now I should imagine most people will have a log store in their woodland and we can use a log or a tree trunk or a branch to make a different sort of hoverfly lagoon. 
So I was trying to decide what other ways, what other ways are there to create a bowl-like structure within within a, a, some wood and I thought about boat making techniques and how for many many years people have used huge tree trunks and hollowed out the center to make canoes. That's how the canoe lagoon was born. So before you cut up your branches or tree trunks to make the logs for your log store it's much easier to work on it while it's still in one piece. So to start with we need to make two cuts fairly deep into the tree trunk parallel with each other and for that I'm going to use my mini chainsaw. So that's stage one done. And the next stage is we are gradually going to work with the grain of the wood to take out slices of it bit by bit. And to do that, I'm going to use a hand ax with a mallet. So it's very similar from um, if you're splitting along the whole length of wood to make fence posts. Sometimes people do it, they will find um, the point in the wood where you can see it's starting to split and then you can put wedges in and you're working with the grain of the wood. The first bit's always the hardest bit. Once you get in then you're literally sort of taking it out in triangular chunks. So these bits actually make really good kindling. So if you keep them and dry them out, that'd be brilliant next time you have a fire. And also what the beauty of doing it um, this way, like this, is you can adjust the angle that it's sitting at. Um, and if you wanted to move it to another location, obviously you can just cut that section out of your tree trunk and you can then prop it up until it's sitting at an angle where the water is flattest which helps a lot stops it all running over the edges but i think that's pretty much ready now for us to fill up with some water so this is when we find out if it is going to hold the water or if it's all going to seep through there we go it just dribbles a little bit over the edges and hopefully there will be enough in there there we go to make a little pond. So there we go, hooray, thankfully my canoe lagoon has proved it's watertight, it can hold the water, it hasn't seeped away. We now have a lovely pond there um, to keep all of the rotting debris and the wood in there and I'm hoping that some of our local hoverfly population will come along and lay their eggs and before long we'll see some of the semi-aquatic larva wriggling around inside. And in a similar way to the wood slices that we put over the tree stump lagoons, I'm going to cover the top of this one using a rock to hopefully keep it um, preserved as much as possible. <laughs> 